What's up, everyone? My name is Jing. I'm just making this video to, you know, help anyone that is also going through kind of the same kind of configuration or deployment I was trying to do when configuring my uh, firewall with Azure Sentinel. So here's what I did. Um, I'm going to show you my screen. So here we have PFSense, and that's my firewall I use. Um, the premise is you just send your your syslog to a syslog collector, and that syslog collector is going to get the logs. And with our syslog, um, I think you have to have it configured. You're also going to install an agent on the, um, the syslog collector. That agent is going to be that log analytics agent you you have in Azure. That log analytics agent is then is kind of used as the underlying log infrastructure so that Azure Sentinel can query it, if that makes sense. So first, you're going to have to have a Azure Sentinel environment with log analytics configured. Um, there's many documentation around that, so I'm not going to go into those specifics. Um, then you're going to need to install that agent onto your syslog collector so it can you know, feed it upstream. Um, what that looks like, let me actually show you with a diagram. So let's say we have our log analytics over here. I'm going to make it blue since it's uh, going to be Microsoft. So we're going to have our collector right here. Um, it'll be log analytics it will then um, Sentinel can query that, right? And then I have uh, PFSense over here and my home infrastructure. So we'll, we'll draw this line. We'll have my PFSense be the uh, main point. And I'm sending syslog to a local uh, Linux box that is a collector. So we're sending a syslog, and we're doing on port 514. So we're sending syslog on port 514 to a local syslog collector. And once you send it there, this collector has a special upstream connection securely to log analytics. It's some kind of agent you install. Okay, so once it has that collector and agent and everything is configured, you then need to make sure you're seeing that data within Sentinel or Log Analytics. So, how do we see that? Well, let me uh, pop over back to my screen. So, here you're going to then want to look at your PFSense. You go to settings, you go to your uh, remote log servers. This is where you're sending syslog to. For my network, is that's my local IP. You then send the remote syslog over via system events, firewall, DNS, DS, you, know, you just send all your events because this is the data you're gonna be calling or filtering uh, within Azure Sentinel. The more data you send, the more you know data is gonna be going to Sentinel, which um, does have that. Um, Pay per use model, and it, it, it's a pretty small model. It's like 25, 50 cents. Uh, don't quote me on that. It's a gigabyte or something. So it's very, it, it's not that expensive. Once you have that data coming into Sentinel, you're going to then go to Sentinel and build your queries, right? Um, let's see. So, where we have here? So you're going to build your queries. And when you build your queries, you're gonna to have to filter by the host name of the fire uh, of your firewall. This is a, a local host name, and then you're gonna to want to then look at the projects, right? You then want to um, extend it. So just to give you a, a brief overview, before you're even seeing this, you're gonna to have to go over here and make sure to go to syslog, go to open connector page go to open workspace advanced settings this takes you to the actual kind of um you kind of see this also in log analytics but really you have to go to your data source you have to go to syslog and make sure to turn on whatever you want right whatever you want to see just turn it on and the more you turn on the more the more stuff you're going to see so you just want to be cognizant of what you want to turn on 
Um, you apply that configuration, right? You check mark to apply it, and then it, an agent will make sure to see uh, whatever relevant events you need to see. Once you have that and you're seeing the data, again, you're going to go back to your um, just Sentinel. You're going to go back to your resource group, and when you go back to your group, go to logs. You're querying your data. This is how you're going to query your data. You're going to go to log management. You're going to go to your syslog. And then once you go to syslog, you're going to get a ton of events. And then from there, this is where you're filtering those events, right? Where host name, where host name is equal to, this is just my local host name. You hold shift, you press enter, you can, you know, run that query. So as you can see, it, it's, it's fairly fast and you get the result fairly quickly. But look at this, you're getting the particular syslog message of whatever and it's, you know, it's all, you know, separated with a comma. So it's, and that's the message you need to parse it, right? You need to parse whatever or pull whatever you want out of that. And that's going to be that extend. So we're going to do, uh, let's do project. Project is just really pulling the columns you want to pull. So syslog message. Let's see what that looks like. Then you go and you want to you want to pull whatever stuff you want. Um, let me use the other query I had. That's just a reference point because I already have it. I'm not going to just think about it. Um, so you want to just grab something like this, right? And so this one would be extend. I'll explain what it is. Extend interface equals split blah 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 but we're gonna go we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna look at it so extend interface what does that mean that means you're just adding another column you're adding another column and then you're gonna go and say it equals that column equals you can say that column equals blah and if you say that column equals blah you're gonna get a ton a ton of blah right but we're not doing that we're gonna extend it and we are going to do split syslog message comma four split means i want you to split this message this syslog message split is going to be the actual kind of um uh, library function that calls upon and we're splitting the syslog message by comma separated values yeah if you do it by something like this then it's not splitting right there's nothing that matches you need to identify what's that separator value if you do it by a zero then you're just going to split oh, man it didn't work huh didn't work. Maybe a period. Let's try a period. No, I don't know. But the premise is you're splitting it, and then that that next number is you're identifying with which kind of um, area you want to pull from. So if we're doing by split comma four. Um, that would be one, two, three, fourth comma. I want this data point right here, right? If you do five, then I should be getting the, uh, I should be getting this. Oh, this is why I did a where, I, would, I did a where statement right after. So let's see, let's, let's just comment out that where. All right. So. Here we go. So see match, right? That's because uh, I wanted the fifth value. And again, this should work. Let's do a zero again. Yeah, see, if you do zero, then you're separating by zeros. I removed that uh, where statement, the last where statement. So we're going to go back to comma. We're going to do by four. And now we have an interface. So let's add more columns. Let's add more columns. Let's you know, extend, let's copy and paste this. Extend maybe, let's try the uh, protocol. If it's TCP, UDP or whatever, um, that's gonna be one, that's, this is four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 15. Nope. I was off. Let's try 16. Yeah, so 16 is going to get you that um, port. Um, now, caveat, as you can see, we saw a little error here. 
because that's a IPv6 address. So because it's that, you're going to have to identify that you know if it's IPv6 or not before you kind of do that. But in this case, we're not doing that. We're just um, pulling whatever and just showing you how you can call this. Once you do this and you build your, um, you got your data points all built out or how to query it, um, you're going to need a dashboard. So that's where you're going to go to dashboards. You're going to pull up, I made a dashboard that I had for this one. And it's just going to, um, it's all just queries. That's just, um, well, that shit didn't work. But yeah, once you have the query, it will uh, propagate and stuff. So I did this also for my um, smart home. And um, so I just basically took a lot of, uh, you know, these Sonoff Tasmodo devices and I started sending syslog over to my um, collector. And then when I started sending it to the collector, I then started trying to figure out how the, how the logs looked. I parsed it and I started building these dashboards. So this one's kind of telling me the total sensors logged, um, total electricity cost, um, you know, what my electricity usage looks like. Oh, that's my laundry machine. So, you know, my laundry machine is just, you know, low and then boom, there, there's a spike. So I can kind of tell when, you know, my laundry is being used and power usage, right? And this is the estimated cost that it might cost me based off my kilowatts per hour. So that's just, you know, weird things I'm just doing with uh, Sentinel. But yeah, I'm taking those firewall logs and aggregating. I wish I could show you, but I probably, I've been messing with the resource groups in, Sent uh, in Azure. So mm, something might be messing up. So if you know, if you're interested in taking some PFSense firewall logs into S Sentinel, um, the big things are make sure you're sending the syslog to a syslog collector. Make sure that syslog collector has the agent. Make sure this is the biggest one because um, um, a colleague had that issue. Was make sure to go to data connectors, go over here in syslog, open connector page, and make sure you turn that stuff on. It's not going to collect it if you don't have it turned on, okay? You can also verify connected sources here to see which, which you know, which uh, computers are connected, right? See? All right. I think that's it. So if you have any questions, if you have any other type of uh, things you want, um, you have any questions about, and I could probably answer, just feel free to ping me, uh, reach out to me on, um, here, message me. Um, I'm on LinkedIn at Jing Nick. That's uh, my last name is spelled N G H I K. So yeah, I hope this was helpful to you, and I hope that you you sent to know more because it's really really fast, and. Um, you know, with Sentinel, you can even do jobs. So the premise is, once you build all that, you get your workspace going. You don't, you don't stop there. You're gonna have um, queries you can build. You're aggregating all the information, and you are having these playbooks that are automatically executed based off what is discovered. So you have special queries, and then you have automation from those queries. So these playbooks will execute, and you know. I have a lot of playbooks, but, you know, maybe send an email, maybe send a notification to Teams based off this. So imagine aggregating everything over here, having playbooks automate, and then you can also have your um, the ones that aren't automated roll up to an incident or workbook so that you can kind of, you know, work through that, um, those particular issues. So, and it's not limited to Microsoft. It's not limited to Syslog. Um, you can feed API into this. You can feed um, any kind of third party we already have a, a partnership with. Um, you can feed, there's other, there's other um, I guess, other formats you could probably feed into it, but I'm only doing Syslog and uh, a few other um, Microsoft products, but a lot of good things you can do. And if, again, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to let me know. Thank you, everyone.